I am reading today from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to bank it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. This morning I'd like to focus on vine connections. Vine connections. This morning I decided to showcase one of two of my plants in my home. Honestly, every time one of my friends showcase their home full of green plants, I feel inspired. My friend David has like a mini conservatory that is so beautiful. And it makes me feel like I can do this even if my former green thumb attempts have failed. Just this past winter, I had nine plants. Count it, nine. I had nine plants the most I've ever had in my home. I was excited and I was hopeful. People can change, can't they? Now with a puppy and a boy man child and COVID and indoor play, these two otherwise loving entities successfully have taken out five plants. The plant food that someone <laughs> <laughs> benevolently gave me, took out another plant. And this plant here today, this plant has a story. It sits at home on my proud DIY plant stool, was dislodged a few months ago from its location. It sits there. This plant doesn't bother or mess with anyone else. You can use your imagination to figure out what happened next. Through a series of play and running and dodging, the plant came smashing to the floor, dirt and all. The plant had been hit hard. One leaf was totally broken with another partly broken. I'm a, you guys may know what to do with it. It's still kind of hanging on. You can see it's uh, halfway broken, but it's hanging in there. This plant has been hit hard. And yet, it has survived. In the store, they call it the plant that is made of steel. I think that that implies that it's the plant that can survive anything. And yet, I've had two other plants to go to heaven that were plants of steel. As I sit with this text this week that talks about vine connections, I think of my plant. And I think that my plant is trying to teach me the importance, even as it hangs on, as it's taking a beating, the importance of connections, the importance of branches and leaves and soils and roots. Our connections are important. In the midst of COVID, I have realized once again how important it is to be connected to God, how important it is to be connected to family and friends. Recently, a member shared with me a series of miscalculated steps that led to her landing on the floor. This is not uncommon for some 
and it is a part of the aging process. It should not be embarrassing or it should not be shameful. It's simply a part of living a long life. But what blessed me was her vine connections appeared. In a durable amount of time, family came to help her get back up on her feet. The fall was severe enough that she was not able to get up by herself. And maybe not at first, because like all we are independent, she didn't appreciate the fall or even having the vine connection. But with time passing by and a family member coming, she could laugh at it with me and she could share the journey. It is important that we remember and cherish our vine connections. They are what help us when we fall, when we are thrown off balance, when we endure trials and tribulations to get back up. Our vine connections keep us rooted and fully supplied with love and care and guidance. This is where we enter the biblical text today, an old and familiar passage about vines and connections. Jesus reminds us that we are to abide in him. He repeats this refrain, abide in me. The word abide means to accept or act in accordance with a rule, decision, or recommendation. Synonyms for abide are adhere, comply, conform, and then that familiar word that we've heard over and over again in our walk, follow. We get the popular music that says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask what you want and it will be given. Some have set up churches under this guise that you can create a Christmas list and get it, missing that the text is not talking about getting what you want on your list, but it's talking about connections. It's talking about vine connection. Vine connections don't just happen, but we have to be intentional about ensuring they happen. We have to create time for them to happen. We have to put them on our agenda for them to happen. We have to say this is important enough for us to put it on our calendar. Otherwise, the business of life will overtake us. Our TV shows will overtake us. Our family will overtake us. Our dinner plans, dirty dishes will overtake us. Celebration of birthday and other celebration and friends and relationships and phone calls and loved ones and COVID aftermath and death, our problems and Zoom overload. All of these things, bills, will overtake us on and on and on and on. There's always something we could be doing besides spending time with God. The author of Messy Tired Love, which is a blog, has a few suggestions for Vine Connections. Get up 15 minutes early. I didn't like that one at all. <laughs> When the alarm goes off, I don't get up then. I hit the snooze button like this morning nine times. <laughs> That's pretty severe. Second, she says, learn key scriptures and play a game with your family. Sing hymns and spiritual songs. I have one friend that plays an hour once a week, and she invites people to sing along with her on Facebook. Attend our Sunday school virtually 930 on Sunday. Listen to a spiritual book on CD while you're doing housework. Do a Bible study together over dinner. Maybe you liked one of these or maybe you liked none, but think about it and think about what works for you. How can you spend more time with God is all? Get creative, says the author of this blog, and make it happen. Vine connections are important. Daily regard for God and what God wants out of our life is important. Having a day-to-day, step-by-step, decision-by-decision kind of relationship with God is important. Reverence in our budgets, in our bills, in our calendars, in our lives for God is important. 
I believe that we live in a cancel culture. If folks do not like what you say, they cancel you out. If folks don't like your brand of politics, they cancel you out. If folks don't like your stand for injustice, they cancel you out. If you do something we think is disgusting and the media gets wind of it, we cancel you out. If you sip and say something that makes you look like a bigot, we cancel you out. That's right, be gone, bye. We cut off and we don't think about it twice. Maybe you remember Amy Cooper. Amy Cooper is a resident of New York City and Amy owns a dog and Amy walks her dog. And Amy was walking her dog in a park and there was a big sign up in the park that said, keep your dog on a leash. Amy's dog was not on a leash and there was another person in the park that day watching birds and a part of a serious bird watcher organization. And that person pointed out to Amy, hey, your dog's not on a leash. Well, instead of Amy saying sorry and just putting her dog back on a leash, Amy gets mad and Amy threatens to call the police on this other person in the park watching the birds. Amy tells them, if you don't stop, I'm going to call the police and inform them that you are threatening me. We don't know why Amy said it, but it's on tape and now the whole world sees her. And when the whole world sees her, her place of employment sees her and they fire her. Now the state is pressing charges against Amy for making a call against someone. There should be consequences for bad behavior. Amy made a poor decision. I was curious though about whatever happened to Amy Cooper after she got canceled. Well, the man never pressed charges against her that was in the park. He chose to forgive. He doesn't know if she understands, but he saw her apology as genuine. Christian Cooper says he thinks it's weird that the people who were upset with her for her threats are now bringing death threats on her. She was mandated to go to counseling to learn around cultural sensitivity. Her dog, after being checked out because he was kind of choking in the incident, was returned to her, and the case was closed. As Christians, we do not counsel folk out. We do believe in accountability. It is important for us to be accountable to God and others, but we never counsel people out. It is important for all of us to answer and check in with our higher being, higher power, and each other. It's important for us to check in with ourselves. Lord, show me me. Show me the person in the mirror. But it is also a part of our vine connections, important to offer people ways to come back after they fall. You don't leave people on the floor. Like my plant today, people fall from grace. Like my plant, people get torn and disconnected. Like my plant, people have their roots challenged and find themselves all over the rug and often they didn't even see it coming. We speak from ugly places. We hold views and beliefs and prejudices about other people, and sometimes those things slip out of our mouth before we can get hold of them, and we reveal for what we truly believe about a situation. We fall down. That shouldn't be the end. We fall down when life comes at us. We fall down when we are scared. We fall down over COVID. We fall down. But we don't cancel people out. And because of a God that picked some of us up, brushed some of us off, saw a diamond in the making, saw life when others saw damage, we might not be nothing pretty to look at, but we're still here. We are what we are, who we are, and where we are by the grace of God. Our vine connections help us to recognize humanity, respect, dignity, affirm equality, listen to complaints and extend sensitivity to anybody, anywhere. We all have some errors in our life, some blunders in our background that didn't show on the background check, and some secrets that are going with us to the grave that ain't never seen the day of light. We might have even fallen and got back up. I remember one winter when I fell, I looked around to see if anybody saw it and I tried to get right back up. We've all fallen. We know what it is to be held. 
assisted and loved on by God, vine connections are important. Our vine connections are growing in our community. Many of you are pillars in Hyde Park and you sit on different committees, gardening committee, civic group committee, senior citizen community. We are everywhere united. We are members of the Hyde Park Chamber of Commerce. We're a part of an interfaith group. We are everywhere. This week I was surprised when the University of Chicago called me up and asked if we were interested in the grant and then help us to fill it out. And it's because of you all. It's because of our vines and our connections in this community. And they didn't just call, but they assisted in filling out the application. And I had to sit back and say, wow, our vine connections are growing. We give people a second chance because we are in the business of second chances. And I'm reminded that on 53rd Street, we are the only business that cares about people. We ought to walk down 53rd Street proud with our chest sticking out because we're the only business on this street that cares about the power of God to change and grow humans. Vine connections are important. There's this true story that happened on Netflix called Penguin Bloom. I don't know if any of you all saw it, but this family goes on vacation to Thailand. And it's a mom, it's a dad, and it's three boys. And her son wants to show mom something. And so they run up the stairs and they run out in this outdoor area and the mom leans on the railing, not knowing that the railing had been loose. And when she leans on the railing, she falls back. They rush her to the hospital. She survives, but her spine is damaged and she is paralyzed. The movie follows her, and this is actually based on a true story. The movie follows her and her family after the fall. And it's clear that mom has given up on life. She doesn't want to live. She used to be a surfer. She used to swim daily. She's not interested in sitting in the wheelchair. But her husband wants her to live. Her three boys want her to live. Her vine connections want her to live. Her pesky mom that gets on her nerve wants her to live. Her sister wants her to live. Her friends want her to live. And then this bird damaged like her that her son rescues enters her life. The parallel is uncanny. And slowly by nurturing the bird, the mom is also nurtured as she realized this new normal is just that, a new normal. Falls unsettle us. They hurt us. They disattach us temporarily. They break us. They paralyze us. All of that, and yet we emerge not perhaps who we once were. We've lived through COVID. We are not who we once were even a year ago. But the vine connector says, I want you to live. I want you to have life and I want you to have it more abundantly. The vine connector says, I want the best for you yet. I don't care how many falls you've taken. I love you and I sent my son, we learn later in the text, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I bent over backwards for you. The vine connector wants us to live and to live with grace toward others. Except for the grace of God, there goes I, so I cannot cancel anybody else out. I've been talking to you all today about falls. Maybe you remembered some fall you took yourself. I've talked about falls that bring tears, that bring tears in our relationship with God. Honestly, yesterday I was walking with my son and Prince, and I was tired. I really did not want to take this walk, but I knew we needed to walk the dog. I knew he needed to get exercise. And I could feel myself. We had walked around and we were coming back home. And something caught my attention. I must admit, I'm easy to get distracted, to be quite honest. And as we were close to home, I saw two men holding balls. 
and they looked like they were trying to throw them at each other. And I thought this was really very enthralling. I didn't know what the name of the sport was, but I found two grown men trying to throw balls at each other kind of just a little bit interesting. And so I took my eye off the road because I was really getting engaged with the men and the balls and what they were doing. I didn't realize ahead of me was a speed bump. And so I was putting one foot in front of the other, expecting flat land. But my eyes were totally on the two men playing with the balls, and I stumbled, and I almost fell, but I didn't. Here's the thing, I could have fell. I didn't fall, and some of us have fallen. Sometimes we take our eyes off the road. Sometimes we take our eyes off of God. Sometimes we take our eyes off of what has been given to us to do. Sometimes we get distracted and put our energy in the wrong place. Sometimes we forget to check in with God on a daily basis and we somehow think we're the author of our own lives. We forget just how important our vine connections are. Luckily, I didn't fall, but I will fall. And you'll fall, and we will fall. If it hasn't happened, my grandmother said, just keep on living. Just remember, it's important for us to stay connected. Those vines are so important. If never before in this past year, we should realize we need to get closer to God. You know, sometimes when things are happening and my child gets a little bit scared, he gets a little bit closer. <laughs> he draws closer to his security. If never before, we need to draw closer, inch, just a little bit closer to the Lord. Keeping our hand in God's hand. Don't let the sun go down without whispering a prayer, asking God, what would you do? Singing a song, remembering that our vine connections are absolutely, they're absolutely important. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, it can be quick and sometimes it's subtle, this distance that emerges between you and us. Lord, it's like drifting in the ocean. You can be standing there and the waves hit you and then you open your eyes at some point and realize you're not standing where you once were and that there's this distance between us and you. Lord, draw us closer. Some of us are close, but draw us closer. Some of us are far. Some of us are lost. Some of us are distracted. Some of us have fallen. Help us to be close to you. Help us to make time for you on our calendar. Scoot aside some of them TV shows and make time for you. Help us to remember those in our lives you have placed there that are blood and water and divine and help us to make time for them. We thank you for these connections. We thank you for staining us, even if we're beat up and bruised and battered and we're missing some branches. We thank you for keeping us. We will work harder and harder to maintain and nourish through your strength and by your spirit to remain connected to you. In Jesus' name. <laughs>